Okay, it's my pleasure to give the, the podium, the floor to uh, the second uh, high order beat talk. So the second 15 minutes plenary talk. And it's uh, with, with great pleasure that I introduce you to Dr. Bubakar Berry. Bubakar Berry comes from the African Association of Universities and specifically is the coordinator for research and education networking unit. Now, he's coming from Accra in Ghana, so it's, it's a long trip. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, we really want our discussion on university in cyberspace uh, to be as inclusive as possible. So not only look at the needs uh, of the universities like the Polytechnic of Turin, but universities with, in a different scenario, in a different context, with different needs, uh, so that as we try to shape uh, university in cyberspace, uh, uh, we also always keep in mind uh, that there are places uh, and uh, people with different perspectives, different desires, different objectives, different needs. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, before the break, uh, the interpreters asked me to try to speak slowly. And uh, I will have to do so because I think otherwise you won't understand my Franklish. Uh, I could try Italiano, but uh, I'm afraid I will stop by uh, saying just uh, buongiorno. Uh, please allow me first to thank the organizers for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to share with this audience some challenges and opportunities of African universities uh, regarding cyberspace. Uh, actually, the African universities face challenges that are manifold. But for this talk, I will just focus on one aspect of the challenges regarding, uh, namely, the physical infrastructure. I was very pleased uh, this morning and this afternoon to listen to the presenters and to the commentators, because I see, I have noticed that we actually share the main views, we share the main values, you know, regarding the role of universities in this digital age. Uh, let me start by giving some data about Africa, because I assume that many of the participants are not really familiar uh, with this continent. We have about a population of roughly 1 billion. We have passed the threshold a few months ago, and this represents about 50% of the world population. And when you come to infrastructure that is important, that is key for the cyberspace, so we see that the telephone penetration in Africa is very small. So we are around 5% of telephone penetration. And if you even look at Sub-Saharan Africa, this penetration is less than 2%. So it's mostly you know, the Northern African country that pull this average up. But you are also certainly aware that mobile is very uh, developing in, in Africa, mobile telephony, and we have today a penetration of about 38%. Uh, Regarding the internet penetration, we are now about 9% for the whole continent, and if you compare it with the world average, which is about 27%, so you can imagine it's a long way to go, you know, to be at the same, at the, at the same level. And we, if you even go regarding uh, and look at bandwidth, so we see that the total of available bandwidths in Africa is only 0.2% of the total available bandwidth in the world. Shift going now to higher education institution, we have about uh, more than 900 higher education institutions in Africa. So I think even that we have passed the 1,000 uh, mark due to the development of small private universities on the continent. Regarding now the enrollment, we have a gross enrollment rate in Africa that is the lowest in the world, 
and it's only 5% of the people who could theoretically you know, be enrolled in higher education. So this, this is a, a fact, and we have today a huge demand of higher education in Africa because of the emphasis of basic education and of secondary education the last 20 years. This result to a massification due to the fact that there are no enough resources to develop the infrastructure. So we have the same infrastructure for a growing demand you know, to enter universities. So we have a student faculty ratio in Africa in about 40 to one and even more. And this is also due to another phenomenon, namely the brain drain. You may be aware that since the 90s, every year Africa is losing about 20,000 of highly skilled professionals and among them faculty staff. So if you look at this, how can IT promote, how can IT contribute in resolving the problem? Uh, first of all, I would like to, to tell you about one aspect, is that African scientists in general and researchers are isolated. That means that they have no means generally to reach to other communities on the same field they are working. So that means that we lack of critical masses for doing research that is really uh, relevant and uh, successful. So there is a need to collaborate. There is a need to network at both national, regional, and international levels. During the break, I was interviewed by the students of Polytechnica de Toronto regarding collaboration among African universities. And I told them there is a fact, for instance, that African researchers and scientists meet more outside the continent than within the continent in conferences, seminars, etc. So there is really a need to put in place a necessary infrastructure that will enable collaboration among this community. Another aspect which is very important is that in many African universities, in most of African universities, there is a lack of textbooks for students. The libraries are overcrowded. So we see here a potential of the cyberspace allowing students to access to knowledge. And this is very important for us to also promote the open access uh, philosophy among our communities. But moreover, it is also important for African universities to disseminate the knowledge that is created within the institution. There is a lot of, there is a massive uh, material that is available in African universities, but that is not shared even at national level, just because of lack of infrastructure so that people don't have to travel to move to access them. And to promote this, what we are doing at the Association of African Universities is to promote sharing of resources, open access. So, and we do it by promoting, for instance, a program that we have on the, at the association for a couple of years now, which is the database of African thesis and dissertations. We also promote, we also encourage, we participate in the organization of annual open access conferences, and we also, we are also involved in supporting uh, FOSFA, which is a foundation on open source in Africa, and promoting or also supporting them for organizing their annual conference, which is called ITLELO. So when we talk about these concepts in the rest of the world, I think that that means that, you know, the major, the basic, the basic elements are in place. And for me, infrastructure is, is, is very important. Otherwise, we can develop uh, policies, we can develop uh, strategies, but if we don't have the necessary infrastructure to implement them, there is no way that it will be useful. But the problem we have in Africa is that bandwidth is the most expensive in the world. Right now we have an average of $3,000 per megabit per second per month that institutions are paying in Africa. If you compare it with uh, some tens of euros of, or for tens of dollars, you know, their counterparts in Europe or in the US are paying. So you see where the barrier really are. So I'm not going to go through this 
details, you have it on the slide. So the main reason for this situation is the lack of competition, because there are very few players in the telecommunication sectors in Africa. Costly technologies are being used, mainly VSATs. And also, there are inadequate regulatory environments that don't allow the development of networks throughout the continent. So there is a need to do policy, to develop policies, and to sensitize policy and decision makers. So in this context, we see that research and education networks can play an important role by enabling the establishment of bandwidth consortia that will give the possibility of having a much more important bargain power. And in this uh, framework, we think that the role of ITT, ICT infrastructure is, in the context of Africa, even more important because it will allow the sharing of scarce resources, the, implement, the improvement of access through introduction of e-learning uh, components by reducing the isolation of researchers by enabling them to use the infrastructure to network with other, other colleagues at national, regional, and international levels, and also allow them to participate through the access of this infrastructure to global resource projects, and also allow the diaspora that you know, uh, went abroad to nevertheless contribute in the development of higher education in Africa. So this is where we are today regarding the establishment of NRENs, of National Regional Education Networks in Africa. So due to the time constraints, I won't go uh, into details. You will have them in the slides. But you see that there are a couple of initiatives throughout Africa aiming at establishing research and education networks to allow the higher education and research community to be able to reach out and to be connected to the community, the global community. But there are reasons for hoping that things will change because there are several development, uh, a lot of developments the last years. Uh, a few months ago, the only fiber infrastructure that was available in Africa was the SAT3 since 2002 for international connectivity, fiber connectivity. Uh, the last two, three months, several Fiber, uh, fiber infrastructure won't, went live, and we have a lot of initiatives that will go live within the next couple of months and by the second quarter of 2011. So I, I, I have not shown the connectivity in the hinterland, but there are also backbone, national backbone, that also allow the distribution of you know, this bandwidth in the hinterland and for also inter-country uh, connectivity. So the objective that we have today is to make sure that African higher education institutions be active part of the global research and education community. If you look at this map, you will see the global Lambda integrated facility that has a huge of bandwidth, you know, linking the Americas to Europe, to Asia, to Australia, and we see that this potential is not being of use for Africa because there is no link here. So this is a big challenge for Africa. This is a big challenge for the higher education sector. We are working on it, and we think that seeing the development in the last two, three years, and having the approach of trying to organize our community into sub-region, we will succeed. I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. I think there is time for one question. Any question for Dr. Barry? Okay, if not, uh, he will be with us for the rest of the conference. Please feel free to approach him.